So welcome everyone to this live stream, uh, the first one. So hopefully it will uh, be all fine without too many hiccups. Uh, we will see <laughs> what we'll be able to do. Um, today we are talking about organic chips, uh, organic chip systems, and we will try to make um, a comparison between the most used, most famous. Uh, organic chip systems in 2024 um, and we had um, we have a little bit more of a longer a longer video uh, already on on YouTube uh, we will post some of the <laughs> we will post some of the information in in the chat later on um, about this video but today we will have a little bit of a, of a sneak preview we we'll try to see a little bit um, yeah what are the most used one what are the differences so let me start with the presentation uh, so okay um first a couple of of words about us what we're doing <clears throat> at uh, lab for pose we are on a mission to have developed new therapeutics and diagnostics for companion animals and uh, on top of this, we would like to help producing animal testing in human health research. And Organachip is obviously one of the technologies that are enabling this. And we are doing our little part into this. Um, and we do this by providing mainly um, biospecimen, animal biospecimens, um, such as dissociated tumor cells from companion animals or healthy cells from a wider variety of, of animals, uh, such as cat, dogs, pigs, um, horses, and, and cows. Um, on top of this, we offer frozen uh, tissues and formalin fixed um, paraffin embedded tissues, FFPEs, and then different kinds of uh, blood and, and biofluids from, from, different, from different regions. <clears throat> on top of this, um, we offer some other accessory um, uh, products such as antibodies and ELISAs for more than 16 different species. And uh, we collaborate also with uh, Altis Biosystems and um, uh, they have a, a really nice uh, human gut model um, that really represents the, um, the, the intestine and the human intestine. And this is obviously one of the building blocks, one of the uh, pieces of a good organ chip system. But uh, today we will focus a bit more on um, another kind of, of organ chip, and we will look a little bit at the definition from Wikipedia. So Wikipedia tells us that a multi, uh, an organ chip is a multi-channel 3D microfluidic uh, cell culture, integrated circuit a chip that simulates the activities, mechanics, and physiological response of an entire organ or, uh, or an organ system. So there are different pieces into this, uh, obviously, that, uh, that you know, would play a role. The first of all would be uh, the fact that it is multi-channel. So there are different channels working in parallel. There's fluidics most of the times involved in uh, an organ or chip. Um, and then we have um, the fact that the model that we have, it's a 3D model, so it's not just cells lying on, um, let's say, on a, on a cell plate or on a cell culture plate, uh, but it's something a bit more uh, complex. Um, and obviously, um, it, 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 it is part of the system that it represents different kind of, um, of, of organs, and in the organ itself, um, the, the question is obviously there are different tissues in the organ itself. How many of these tissues are actually represented? Um, <clears throat> this is uh, a part of, let's say, a, a parameter, a wider parameter that we would call a biological accuracy of the model. One of the issues in general for organ or chip is how do we compare them? Every organ on a chip system is a little bit different. They have a little bit of a different focus. Um, someone, some of them are, are focusing more on one particular organ. Some of them are 
focusing on several different organs. Some of them are focusing <clears throat> more on the fluidics, other are focusing more on uh, other kinds of control. So when we are kind of comparing them, we will have to decide, okay, what are the aspects that are most important for us? So one of those is obviously biological accuracy. So how near um, is the model to basically the application, uh, the, the, the situation in vivo in the animal, in human or whatever. And uh, connected to this, we have obviously also the microfluidic design, which is uh, basically, so am I able to customize this particular model? Am I able to uh, rewire it? Am I able to um, define myself how different organs or the different parts of the GBD blocks of this chip are communicating with each other? And then we have obviously the part of integration and connectivity. So is it um, possible to represent different organs or different tissues on the same chip? How well integrated are them? Um, is this, are they cleanly separated by different uh, chambers, for example, or are they communicating with each other with through a membrane maybe, or what else? Uh, then we have measurement and uh, monitoring. So also here, is this already integrated in the device? Is it possible to integrate? What are the kind of measurements that I can do? Is this offline, inline? And then we have uh, the regulatory validation of uh, of the system. Um, so what is the amount of data that they have? Is this, how did I validate this, uh, this model? What are the different factors that would play a role into this? <clears throat> and then uh, there's obviously, I, I kept it last, but it's actually quite, quite interesting and, and quite uh, important, especially if I'm going for, for a development application, if I'm developing a drug. So what is the scalability and throughput of a particular a particular system. Can I test hundreds of different candidates of this? Or, I mean, thousands, we are probably far from that yet uh, at this point, but that's the, the main idea. How much can I develop with, uh, with that? How many uh, candidates can I, can I test? Um, and so now, without further ado, let's start, in, uh, let's start our, our comparison. So the first, um, the first part is the first um, model would be Kirkstall. Kirkstall is um, uh, a British uh, company. They are already in the market since uh, a long time. As you see here, they have uh, different models that are um, quite plastic based. So they have um, these model. These are basically six different chambers. Um, it's, uh, it's like a single well. They also have the same thing as an individual well, and a, they have another system where they have a, a barrier model. So basically a trans well into this, or a cell culture insert in this kind of, of format. Um, as you can see, this is fully customizable. Also the, the pieces can be, um, can be changed. These are commercially available pieces. So eventually you can customize the way you want. It doesn't come with an integrated measurement, but uh, it is possible to customize a little bit. Um, and so it is possible to, um, to, to rewire it to, uh, to, to, to basically include also a measurement system. They have a quite good body of data. It's already a wider there in the, in the market. Um, and so they were able to publish a lot of, a lot of material today. So this was our first, it was first model. And the second company that we're going to discuss today, it's a bit more recent um, company. Uh, it's already some years there in the market. This is a French company called Cherry Biotech. And Cherry Biotech um, specialized on two different, on two different models, especially. And they are here represented on the, on the slide. So the first one uh, is basically a, um, like, a plate in which on the bottom there are like micro um, wells. Uh, there are known adherents of so the cells will basically roll and form this organoid on the top, on the bottom of the, um, of the plate. Um, and the second one enables basically to vascularize this kind of organoid. So this is uh, quite a quite nice system. Um, and while the plates per se would not have any particular kind of um, uh, of controls integrated, the the plate is bigger plate that you see 
um, is actually integrated or can be integrated in, in a device. So there's uh, hypoxia, normoxia control, pH control, glucose, lactose, um, oxygen uh, uh, control. And it's also possible to image the cells, which is really, really nice for, um, for uh, uh, an organ or chip system. Um, on the, on the uh, flip side of, of the medal, this is uh, obviously a, a quite established system, 24 wells, everyone knows this from, from the practice, um, but it doesn't have an infinite mm, you know, possibility to, to, to be customized. Um, on the other side, they really developed this with the final application in mind. And so there are several collaborations, publications, especially with other companies that make this particularly relevant. Uh, and I think that they will grow also on, in terms of, of body of publications, but really nice company to keep an eye on. Our third company is React for Life. This is a, um, an Italian company and um, they really specialized on barrier models. So they have really particular models um, from different kind of mucosas, especially, but also, but not only also skin and so on. And so they, they really specialized or they really focused on characterizing these models really, really well. Um, so they have a, a ton of data uh, on this and a lot, ton of expertise also to perform services. Um, and they have these, these are individual uh, wells. They also developed uh, a device that is called a Tokyo platform. And on this, it's possible then to um, control the fluidic really well. Um, as you can see from, and, and it basically hosts up to 24 different of these models. Um, you can see from the, from the photo here that it, um, the, the, the tubing, uh, it's a relatively standard one. So you can change this, you can rewire it the way that you want. So quite flexible as a, as a model. Um, yeah, definitely another company to, to keep an eye on. It, 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 in the model that as it is, there's no really integrated uh, controls apart from the fluidic, but I'm quite sure that it's possible to wire this kind of models to a device that is doing, uh, also, for example, inline controls. Mm -hmm. The fourth and last um, company for today is CN Bio. And CN Bio is another company that uh, developed different kinds of plates, but also um, developed the plate in combination with the device. Uh, so they are looking at, at both aspects and of you know, how to control the whole system. Um, and so they, they really specialized on, on liver cells and, and there they had their, uh, or they still have their, their main focus. So they developed this liver plate at 20, uh, 12 or 48 uh, wells. Then they have a barrier plates where they're looking at barrier models and then the dual organs are a kind of compromise or a kind of, of mix of the two. Um, and the dual organs plate, these are the ones that are here on the picture. So you can see there's a barrier uh, model, which is uh, basically communicating with, um, with the liver model here on, on this other uh, like rectangular shape kind of chamber. Uh, all components are customized and these are all things that are proprietary from the, from the company. So you will not be able to find anything outside this platform that fits into this. Um, but for this, they have a really nice fluidity control. They have validated the data really well, also validated the, um, the cells. Um, and this model, for example, is particularly interesting. Um, here, they, they also had this collaboration with Altis uh, Biosystems. So for example, culturing uh, a gut model here in the membrane, uh, modern barrier model. And then deliver here. This is the nice way to uh, to study admitox in the same um, in the same model. And there was also some data published, uh, for example, on um, gut uh, passage one and two, pass one and two uh, metabolism. It was really really interesting kind of of data. And uh, that was the end of uh, of this presentation. And for this was also the end 
of our live stream. Um, thank you very much for participating to this call. And well, see you in the next stream.